On October 11, 2011, the Department of Justice revealed that U.S. officials had foiled a plot to kill the Saudi ambassador to the United States and plans to bomb the Saudi Arabian and Israeli embassies in Washington and Argentina. Iran's Codes Force, the organization that oversees Iran's global terrorist activities and reports directly to Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, planned and financed this initial attack. This presentation explains the details and perpetrators of the plot, which was foiled by American law enforcement and intelligence authorities, and also reveals how the operatives involved have established complex militant networks in Iraq responsible for the deaths of scores of U.S. military personnel. In partnership with Prescient Analytics and Palantir Technologies, this assessment leverages the Palantir Analytic Platform to integrate and examine the relational and geospatial elements of open source data from the Critical Threats Project at the American Enterprise Institute and from the Institute for the Study of War. Using Palantir's quick search function and adding the event to the graph, we can conduct a search around to discover all of the entities associated with the plot. One of the two main perpetrators of the attack is Mansour Arbab Siar. Viewing a summary of Arbab Siar's dossier in the Selection Helper, we learn that he is a dual Iranian-American citizen living in Corpus Christi, Texas. The Selection Helper also allows us to see all events related to Arbab Siar. On September 29, 2011, he was arrested at Kennedy Airport in New York City. The day before, on September 28, 2011, Arbab Siar had attempted to fly to Mexico, but was denied entry and returned to the United States. The other perpetrator is Golam Shakuri, a member of the Codes Force who was still at large. Shakuri, according to Bahrain's foreign minister, Sheikh Khalid Al Khalifa, was also the key Codes Force agent directing the hardline elements of the opposition in Bahrain during the Arab Spring. By using one of Palantir's collaborative tools, we can view the larger structure of the network on the graph and look more deeply into individuals linked to the plot. Qasim Soleimani is the head of the Codes Force. He reports directly to Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Hamed Abdullahi is also a senior member of the Codes Force and Soleimani's deputy. Abdullahi oversees other Codes Force officials who were responsible for coordinating and planning the plot to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington, D.C. Among them is Abdul Reza Shalai, also known as Haji Youssef. Shalai is the head of the Department of External Special Operations within the Codes Force. A review of his associations in the Related Entities tab reveals that he is the cousin of Mansour Arbab Siar, who was the main perpetrator of the plot. Shalai's deputy in the Codes Force is Golam Shakuri, the other perpetrator named in the criminal complaint. The plot began in the early spring of 2011 when Shalai approached his cousin to kidnap the Saudi ambassador to the U.S., Adel al Jubair. Arbab Siar told Shalai that he had contacts in the United States and Mexico, some of whom he believed to be narcotics traffickers. By pulling the events linked to the assassination plot from the Object Explorer, a tool for top-down analysis, and using the Timeline Helper, we can highlight critical events on the map. Arbab Siar traveled from Texas to Mexico on May 24th to meet with a person he believed to be a member of the Mexican drug cartel. The supposed cartel member, known as CS1 in the Department of Justice complaint, was actually a DEA informant. Shortly after his meeting with CS1, Arbab Siar traveled from Houston, Texas to Tehran. Adding our current view to the map as a reference, we can now analyze Arbab Siar's activity in Iran. During his time in Iran, Arbab Siar routinely met with Golam Shakuri and Hamid Abdullahi. They discussed the details of the plot, which was given the code name Chevrolet, and aimed to use the drug cartel in Mexico to carry out the assassination. The Iranian official approved a $100,000 down payment for CS1. He also told Arbab Siar that Codes Force Commander Qasem Soleimani was aware of the plot, promising that he would meet him in the future. While it is not publicly known how long Arbab Siar stayed in Iran, we can see that on June 23rd, Arbab Siar arrived in Mexico after traveling internationally. Reading a note created by an analyst, Arbab Siar met with CS1 and described to him the operations for CS1 and his associates, stating that the assassination of the Saudi ambassador was the main target before any other attack. At a meeting on July 14th, CS1 told Arbab Siar he would need four men and a $1.5 million payment for the plot. 
Arbab Siyar told CS1 that he would receive a $100,000 down payment transferred in installments to the account of CS1's choosing. Three days later, on July 17th, the two men met again to discuss the plot. During the meeting, Arbab Siyar said that the payment was not from his account, but that he had the Iranian government behind him. Using the flows helper to view the movement of funds between entities, we see that CS1 received two money transfers in early August. The first payment, of roughly $50,000, was wired by a foreign entity from a foreign bank account affiliated with the Codes Force into an FBI undercover bank account on August 1st. The second payment was transferred on August 9th. Two days later, CS1 confirmed that he had received the entire payment. With the attack date approaching, Arbab Siyar prepared to travel from Tehran to Mexico to act as collateral while the plot was underway. Before his departure, Shakori asked Arbab Siyar to call and confirm his safe arrival in Mexico. On September 28th, Mexican authorities denied Arbab Siyar entrance into the country and he was returned to New York's Kennedy Airport, where his flight had originated. Upon arrival in New York, Arbab Siyar was arrested by U.S. federal agents who confiscated his return ticket to Iran scheduled for October. Under supervision of federal agents, Arbab Siyar called Shakori on October 5th to notify him that the plot was moving forward, but that CS1 had requested more money as payment for the plot. This request was initially rejected, but in a call two days later, Shakori said that he would seek approval from his superiors for an additional $100,000 payment. Opening the media file directly from the selection helper, we can watch a clip of U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder and FBI Director Robert Mueller publicly revealing the details of the plot in a press conference on October 11th. The U.S. Treasury Office of Foreign Assets Control also sanctioned Shakori and Abdullahi and updated the sanctions against Soleimani and Shalai. We can leverage the collaboration application to cooperate with fellow analysts. Here, we see a message with the documents in which Shalai has been sanctioned for his involvement in a January 20, 2007 attack against U.S. soldiers in Karbala, Iraq. On January 20, 2007, Gunmen with, quote, American-looking uniforms, vehicles, and identification cards, end quote, successfully entered the Karbala Provincial Joint Coordination Center, known as the PJCC, and launched an attack on U.S. and Iraqi officials who were holding a meeting. The militants killed five U.S. soldiers and wounded three more in the well-planned and executed attack, which was conducted by the Iranian-backed Shia militia group, the League of the Righteous. The group was led by Kais Kazali. League of the Righteous Militants received extensive assistance from the Codes Force. Abdul Reza Shalai was responsible for planning the attack, and his subordinate Ali Musa Dakduk served as the liaison between Kazali and the Codes Force. Dakduk is a member of Lebanese Hezbollah. He joined the group in 1983, and since that time has held a number of senior leadership positions including commanding a Hezbollah Special Operations Unit and coordinating security for Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah. When the Codes Force sought to reorganize their support for Shia militias in Iraq in 2006 to restructure them into a network resembling Lebanese Hezbollah, Dakduk traveled to Tehran with his superior, Youssef Hashim, the head of Lebanese Hezbollah Special Operations in Iraq, to participate in a meeting with the top Iranian leadership. By importing a custom-built template, we can use the search around wheel to discover that Shalai and Soleimani were also present at the meeting. The Karbala PJCC attack alerted coalition forces to the growing threat of Shia militant groups and the extent of Iranian assistance for their networks. Adding a layer and using the heat map, a tool for analyzing trends geospatially, we can chronologically show the density of activity throughout the operating environments of these militant networks. Intelligence gathered from the attack ultimately led to the capture of Kais Kazali, his brother Laith, and Ali Musa Dakduk in Basra two months later. However, the Kazali brothers have since been released from Iraqi custody and continue to conduct attacks on U.S. personnel with Iranian support. To assist enforcement and intelligence authorities in monitoring developments relating to the Kazali brothers' activities, we can create a persistent search feed in their dossiers in order to receive new information as it is entered into Palantir. While Codes Force-sponsored militants have attacked United States personnel in Iraq for years, 
the recent plot to kill the Saudi ambassador in the United States is the first known attempt to launch an attack on U.S. soil. The plot marked the launch of an Iranian campaign of attacks in North and South America, reportedly including follow-on attacks against Saudi and Israeli embassies. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, Codes Force officials established a multi-million dollar fund for financing such operations. This campaign underscores the growing ambitions of the Codes Force and marks an escalation of the Iranian regime's war against the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia. To learn more about Palantir's powerful analytic platform, please visit www.palantir.com and explore the analysis blog. To view additional demonstrations produced by Prescient Analytics, please visit www.prescientanalytics.com. For more information on the Institute for the Study of War and to download their reports on Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya, please visit www.understandingwar.org. To understand the challenges across Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, in addition to Iran, and learn more about the Critical Threats Project at the American Enterprise Institute, please visit www.criticalthreats.org.